It's interesting to me that, I mean, if he's, if your cousin was the head of the Vatican Bank and he was in on it, that just means that corruption runs through the Vatican from the top to the bottom. Of course. Yeah. Well, the Pope, Pope Paul VI was in on it. Wow. <laughs> Pope Paul, let me tell you something. My cousins that were there, they're supposed to be cardinals and everything, right? They all had girlfriends. They all had kids. The Pope, everybody talks about, I mean, the Pope was a great guy, Pope Paul VI, but he had three kids. Let's talk freaking serious. Come on. How do you expect a guy to stay like this all his life and not go with a woman? Come on. Let's be serious. That's stupid. But there was a lot There was a lot involved, and especially when Pope John Paul I came in. That poor son of a bitch, he signed his own death warrant. Well, t- tell me about that, because that, that story is, that's crazy. That one, when I was reading the book, listening to you talk uh, on the Enforcer podcast, which again, we'll link in the show notes, that one even kind of shook you up, because you were like, wait a minute, we're going to do what now? Yeah. What happened? <clears throat> Pope Paul VI, he dies. So Pope John Paul I gets elected. One, two, three. Okay. After he's in about 16, 17 days, he turns around and he says, anybody who was involved in the stock fraud with the Vatican, I'm going to excommunicate them and defrock them from the church. Mm-hmm. Which means now you're falling under Italian law, you're falling under the, all the laws of the United States, you were, we're all screwed. All right, let's put it that way. We're dead in the water. They call me up. Uh, Marcinkus calls me up. He goes, we're coming into New York. All right, good. They fly in. They say, we got to see Grandpa. I said, all right. They had their own jet. Vatican has its own jet. They come in, come to the house. They said, what's going on? I says, we'll talk. So they go see my grandfather, my father's father, Antonio. They told him what happened. So he says, all right. He says, we got to get rid of him. I'm looking at him. I said, you got to get rid of who? He goes, got to get rid of the Pope. Are you fucking kidding me? Said, no. He said, you're coming with us. I'm coming with you. Yeah, you're coming with us. So my grandfather says, I'll come. Said, Let's talk. What happened? So my, my grandfather says, I give you the okay. I give you my blessing. Because they came in to get my grandfather's okay. To take, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. To take this guy out. Now, I have to go with him for two reasons. One is to tell them how to uh, put him away nicely without using violence. So he says, I said, what me? He goes, well, you were in Nam. I said, yeah, but in Nam, I killed him with guns and stuff. He goes, no, but okay, I got to tell you how to do it very peacefully. Okay. And second, here's where you're going to get the laugh. I got to be their witness before God. And I looked at him. I said, what? He says, when we die, so we're going to go before God, and God's going to say, you killed one of my popes. And we can say, no, we did it humanely. He didn't suffer. He didn't have any pain. And God's going to say to them, well, who's your witness? They're going to say, our cousin Anthony's our witness. So I'm supposed to go before God, tell them this. God says, he's going to look at me, and he's going to go, uh-uh. He's going to pull the lever. I'm going to go to hell. The devil's going to say, no, nah, I don't want you to eat. He's going to pull that, and I don't know where the fuck I'm going to wind up. I says, you got to kill a pope? He says, yeah. I said, you're crazy. He says, you know how many years we've been killing popes in, this, in, in the Vatican, how many centuries we've been doing it? For centuries, if they didn't like the guy that was in, they got rid of him and put their own guy in. Oh, wow. I go back with him, and I'm saying, you, got, you, you guys are fucked. No. Nope. I saw the whole route of the Pope. I says, here's what you do. You either get ketamine or Valium, put it in his tea, because he likes his tea real sweet. This mm-hmm. is once he goes to sleep, you get potassium cyanide in a glass bottle. Well, why not plastic? I said, well, if you get plastic, when it eats through it, I said, we're all going to be dead. You get glass with a glass eyedropper. Fill the eyedropper up, put it in between his lips, just squeeze, and he walk out of the room. Pope turns around, falls asleep. We're watching everything. All the cardinals, everybody's there. Goes in, boop, puts it in, walks out, closes the door. The guy who brings the tea and everything goes to check on the Pope. Half hour later, ringing the bell, there's something wrong with the Pope, something wrong with the Pope. Doctor comes in. Pope is dead. Now they're crying. You hypocritical bastard. You just whacked the guy and you're crying. <laughs> My cousin goes, we got to make it look good. Now, here's the catch. The only one who can touch a Pope, you got to be a doctor, embalmer, or whatever. You have to be with the Vatican, living in Vatican City. You can't be like a cardinal and you're a doctor and you live outside in Rome. You got to be living in Vatican City. Otherwise, you can't touch it. No, everything is in-house. Mm-hmm. Everybody knew what was going to go on. They laid him out. After that, right in the wall. Goodbye. 
Oh, it's right, because they put them in the... Uh, yeah, in the wall, in the mausoleum. Yeah, yeah mausoleum. Yeah. But there's a lot more to that story, but I got that in book two, which you'll all be surprised on, the, on seeing, find out who he was related to this guy. The, Pope that Pope? Pope? I'm very oh, yeah. curious. I'm very uh, curious. That, that's, got it, that's in book two. All right. But I'll tell you one thing. One thing I will tell you. It was always written in stone that when the Pope died, he would get in, and he got in like that. It was already written in stone that he would become the next Pope. 